I got to tell you all, there's a lot of energy back there. Half of us were doing jumping jacks, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about healing the divide. I'm sure you've all heard by now, we have a huge unity problem in this country. We're very divided, and I would like to talk about how to heal that from the inside. Inner work, the work that gets avoided by most of us. In our, in our defense, our society supports and even encourages that. And it's the work that doesn't get nearly enough attention. And the thing that's important to realize about inner work is that what we do on the inside is what we do on the outside. And what we do on the inside is we divide ourselves. We put things into categories, good and bad. And the things we put in the, ca the bad category include things like anger, resentment, grief, anxiety, fear, worry. It's a long list. The problem with this is when we experience those things, we think that something is wrong or flawed in us rather than the fact that we're simply human. So we learn how to avoid these things at all costs, even if it costs us ourselves. We use things like alcohol, drugs, food, shopping, social media, TV, even wellness, even religion, to numb and suppress these very important feelings. The truth is, our feelings and moods are supposed to change. We're not supposed to be static. I think we humans forget that we are part of nature. We're not separate from nature. And much like nature changes, so do we. And if you live here in Michigan, you know you can experience four seasons in one day. And I don't know about you, but my inner world can relate to that. We think that the running and the fighting and the pushing and the pressure are the things that keep us safe. But sometimes it's the stopping and the looking and the feeling more deeply that creates the most strength and the most healing. We're taught that these so-called bad feelings and bad moods are simply things to be fixed, but they are so much more than that. Take anger, for example. If we take anger and just stick it in the bad category, and we don't take the time to examine what is going on in us when we are triggered by something. What's happening at a deeper level in us? What's potentially calling us? Then we end up doing one of a few things. One, we suppress it so much that it eats away at our bodies. Two, we can't suppress it any longer, so we explode on all the wrong people and in not the best ways. And three, when other people in our lives show up expressing anger, even in healthy ways, we want to hurry up, suppress, oppress, fix, and shut them up too. What we do inside, we do outside. I spent most of my life pushing my sensitivity away in essence, running away from my true self. The world around me always to told me that I was too sensitive. So I spent a very long time hardening myself, trying to make myself so-called strong. I ended up hardening myself to my own experience, to my own feelings, to my own instincts, constantly second-guessing myself. I was trying to desensitize myself, and don't we see that everywhere? I spent so much time criticizing, judging, analyzing, fixing, comparing myself, that not only was I disconnected from who I really am, but I was also disconnected from my spirit. And I would add the big spirit, what some people might call God or the infinite. This whole idea of powering through, it's so harsh and hard. And in our society, we've made it into something like a requirement, something that says something about our success or our strength. And sometimes it might, but to what end? 
What about when we're powering right through ourselves and our bodies and then right over each other? It's painful. And our bodies hold this harshness and this hardness. Our bodies hurt because of it. Our relationships hurt because of it. Our world hurts because of it. We transmit it all over the place and we don't even realize it. Learning how to love myself and, and build a softness within myself is truly one of the hardest things that I've ever learned. And I've learned a lot of hard shit. <laughs> this one I will never stop learning. And I learned that loving myself had so much more to do, had little to do, rather, than with liking myself all the time or liking my moods all the time. It had little to do with liking my appearance or my accomplishments. Loving myself had so much more to do with wrapping my suffering, my pain, my struggles, my difficult moods, my difficult emotions with the tenderness, the care, and the reverence that it deserves so that the wisdom and the life in these things could emerge, so that I could emerge, so that I could be known more to myself and to the people around me. Not to mention, I feel better physically and emotionally. I'm more present when I can do this. And the truth is, all of us can do this. All of us can build and grow the courage to bear our own suffering and our own challenges. What if every one of us were to learn how to do this, to build the nervous system and the strength to wrap our struggles with the care and the tenderness and the reverence that they, de they de deserve? What treasures might we find there? What parts of us might we recover? What healing might happen in us? What creative solutions might emerge? What peace might we experience? This is where healing the divide starts. When we stop splitting off from these things and learn how to treat ourselves with tenderness. The world needs this. May we all grow the courage to do it. Thank you.